the best way to ride a bike is really have a low forward centre of gravity. The first best and way to do that is really to sit on the bike. It allows you to sit right forward. In this position we can keep a low forward centre of gravity, our head and chest further forward. Our main aim should be to get as much body weight as possible over the front tyre, allow the front tyre to find grip. Common mistakes which you're suffering with a little bit is that road bike riders tend to sit in the middle of the seat, tend to lean back a little bit, which takes the weight off the front tyre. Now in these slick conditions that can cause so many problems where you, you actually lose steering. So what we're going to concentrate on first of all is just getting your bum as far forward up the, forward up the seat. The seat's designed to get, help get your weight forward. Head and chest further forward so you're leaning over the front end of the bike and then just raising your elbows up into what we call an attack position. In this position we can negotiate all the turns and keep the weight on the front end. The bike should do what we ask it to do. Everything that Barry says, where to sit, when to stand, how much power to give it, works. Just do what he says. Start skiing off piste and it's going to get messy. It is possible to fall off on Barry's courses, but if you follow his advice, you shouldn't. OK, now we've moved on from the sitting down position, the next progression is obviously learning how to stand up on the bike properly. Obviously 90% of the riding should be done in the standing up position. It allows the suspension to do more of the work, gives you a lot easier ride, allows you to save energy. Common mistakes, which you're suffering from, is a lot of guys tend to just, when they stand up, is really just take the bum off the seat and end up having such an angle in the legs, they've got nothing to, they don't stand up properly and they end up collapsing on the bike uses too much energy what you need to be able to do is to stand up but still keep a forward and a fairly low center of gravity that's done by actually straightening the legs and still keeping your head and chest over the front of the handlebars we can just move from this position into that position legs straight nice pivot at the hips just rest down on your handlebars nice throttle control and look where you're going that's just a basic Anybody who's ever plonked around a field on a little old scrambler bike on a farm when they were a kid will find this familiar territory. Of course, when you're a kid, you don't get scared. Even going in a straight line can be a challenge with a reasonable amount of power and plenty of bumps. It's very easy to get a bit of a wiggle on. Okay, now we need to move on to some cornering technique. Your cornering's not too bad. You've got a common mistake, which is you're riding the dirt bike like a road bike. Your, your body position tends to be in a little bit of the middle of the bike, your weight's off the front end. For cornering, the first tip I can give you really is to make sure you maintain that good attack, sit down attack position. That's fairly important whatever kind of corners you do. Uh, the next thing is, most road bike riders tend to look, when they're on the road, they look ahead 80 or 90 yards at any one time. When they start to get onto a dirt bike, straight away they're negotiating ruts and bumps, which the, for the first time is quite daunting, so they're looking down, where you need to get the whole fluid motion done in one easy move. That can be achieved by, once you've checked your line, once you enter the corner in a good attack position, pick your chin up, look ahead, and the bike will turn around the corner. Where you're looking is normally where you end up. Another useful thing I found was just to have a kind of faith that eventually the back end will follow the front, even if sometimes you think it might not. The proper name for this, apparently, is a berm. I've got another name for it. It's called an utter, utter, Ooh. OK, now what we need to do is try and get you to negotiate some hills. Give yourself some fun, have a bit of a thrill at the same time. What two basics you need to consider? First of all, a lot of common mistakes is that when people let the bike start to go down a hill and let the front end drop down the hill, your natural instinct is to lean back. In most cases, that can be the worst thing you possibly do. As, you lean, as the front's dipping away, you lean back, the back end of the bike hits you up the backside and pitches you over the handlebars. Nine times out of ten, when somebody crashes down a hill, it's because the back end of the bike has catapulted them out of control. So what you need to do is still maintain the good low forward centre of gravity so that the bike, in effect, the front and the back wheel are like a seesaw. You stay in the middle of the bike where it pivots. As the bike drops down the hill, you can still keep the centre of the bike and it'll, all the front end will do all the work. As soon as you lean back, the bike drops away, pitches you out of control. So it's basically the same thing, just a little bit more grit and uh, determination. Hmm, the last time I stood at the top of something this steep, I had a sledge and I was seven and I wasn't frightened. 
if you panic and overdo the braking, why do you want to stop halfway down the hill? The secret is to get down to the bottom. So, and in doubt, let the brakes off. There's always something at the bottom that'll stop you. In our case, it's a, it's a 20 foot river. Okay, now we've negotiated the hill. What we need to do is give you an option, just in case for some fluke of nature, you don't manage to get up the hill. You need to know how to escape in the safest possible way. Remembering safety has got to be your number one priority. As we approach the hill and all of a sudden you're halfway up, if you find that you can't make the hill, you've got to also anticipate that slightly. Turn the bike to the right and then fold the bike so you're high side up the hill so that your body weight goes into the hill. Then in this position, as the bike is now, you'll find that you can take a breather, reassess the situation, and it's so much easier to turn around and go back down the hill in control than rather than lose the bike and then flip the bike over. If you're in the middle of the desert and you crashed on a hill, it could be the, the end of everything. So you need to be able to anticipate when something's not gonna quite happen, okay? Okay, so got down and missed the river. Now what goes down must come up. I can already start to feel the benefits this might bring to my road bike handling, just from bike confidence. I must say that has been really, really useful. Thank you, Barry. It's increased my bike confidence anyway. Now, you've sorted out a bike for me, so we can go off on a bit of a trail, yeah? Excellent. After you. Come on then, Rich. <laughs> <laughs>